Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And I'm Dr. Bill Deagle, and we have our first guest, uh, Stan Dale. Stan, uh, lots of major updates since we had you last on about six months ago. Tell us uh, what's going on in terms of earth changes. Well, there's um, quite a bit going on. I guess you've heard that the um, that there's uh, a lot of talk in the uh, oh the circles that follow earthquakes and stuff that we've got two slip zones that have been glossed over. Uh, they're 1,700 miles long. One of them is running from Washington State, up close to where uh, you know the northwest corner of the United States, all the way down to Florida, and that's wow. the Arb- the Arvidsson um, liniment, and it's um, a long. You know, you know how the um, tectonic plates move you know, left and right against either up and down, and some move underneath, uh, like the West Coast? Well, this particular liniment or underground fault that's hidden by dirt and deposits on top was first noted in the, um, uh, the uh, Lewis and Clark expedition. They, they noted it was there, and it, so we've known about it for that long. But this thing is moving. The southwest side of it is moving uh, one direction, and then across the line, it's moving the opposite direction. Now that uh, it, it takes it takes sudden jumps when it goes. It's not moving like slowly. It just takes sudden jumps. And there's another one that runs from that place in Southern California, where we've had that flurry of earthquakes here recently, down to the tail end of California. That is where another the liniment flip zone starts and goes down in toward Mexico City running almost parallel to the one up in the major part of the United States. Now, these two things uh, add to problems when you look at the New Madrid possibility, the San Andreas possibility, the uh, Juan de Fuca plate. All these things could make a big enough shake to cause that to slip again, and people living along that line might want to rethink their locations. It's just, um, you know, in fact, part of it goes up into Yellowstone. I mean, now that the uh, line that runs up from uh, Washington State, what town or city would be closest to the the northern part of that? Well, when I yeah, it, it'd be closer to Mount St. Helens. Uh, you go onto uh, our website, standao dot com, uh, and look at Stan's Corner or at Show Images under your name for the show today. Show Images. You right. click on that. Can you are, you are you following me along there? Yes. Okay. If you click on that. You'll get a show images page which shows it says show images, the Rachel's in USA, that kind of stuff on it. Do you see that yet? Uh, it's just pulling it up. There's oh there we are. Okay, it says show images. Uh, is that on the top? Yep. Well it's, Stan, it says Stan's corner, geophysics, astrophysics. Uh well Would it be under would it, is under Stan's corner? Uh, it, it is, but you can get to it quicker if you just scroll down to where the microphone is on the left to show Stan's interviews. And okay. it says, and guess, stand guess with Dr. Bill Deagle on Nutramedical Today. Right. And at the end of that line, it says, show images. You just click on that. Oh, okay. Tell me when you get there. Well, let's talk about it first so we don't have dead air. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. When you get there, it, it, there's a thing called New Madrid there. Uh, and right. Key fault lines. Okay. And you click on that, and it'll take you to a, a picture, in fact, three pictures that I'm put up there showing where this lineament line really runs. It's, they call it the Montana-Florida lineament, but um, it goes up into Canada even. So if you get there, you'll see that the, the, it's a gravitational anomaly is how they tracked it, the, the change in gravity along this line. And um, I've got a couple of versions of it there. The that's that's interesting because you found a number of anomalies that are tied with earthquakes that I don't think anybody else has looked at. Gravitational anomalies. You also were getting uh, satellite data from the Navy up to a couple of years ago. That was probably one of the most accurate ways of predicting earthquakes based on piezoelectric heating of the oceans along fault lines that extend onto land as well. Right, and um, as I can't tell you where it is, but I did read after a couple of years after they stopped making that information public that the Navy was using a method uh, with one of their satellites to measure the change in electric field just before an earthquake. And so, in essence, the um, reason I was getting such good results from their sea surface temperature maps was that they were combining data from their electric uh, uh, field monitoring uh, into that report. Now, I don't know whether it's accidental or otherwise, but I was able to determine, you know, within you know a few hundred miles, you know, a big circle, where the, the next major earthquake would be. 
and uh, they're doing that now, but not publishing it to, to the general public. So it, at least, I guess someone's using the technique now, but uh, sadly we can't look at it ourselves. It In other words, they're using some of the data or some of your technique to do predictions, but they're not making it available to the public. That, yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, I, I went to the area that says uh, featured news, September left uh, guest stars uh, listening info below, and uh, is it under that area? Did you see where it says? Um, it's not uh, featured news. Go underneath featured news, and you'll see a big microphone on the left side of the page. You see that? <laughs> big Scroll microphone. down a bit. Uh, it goes editorial today, and then more news. Mm, that's as far down as it goes to the more news and Stan's interviews. Here it is, Stan's interviews. Is that it? Yeah, and the, the top line, Stan guesses with Bill Deagle, and go to the right side of that first sentence there. It says, show images. For some reason or other, it's not showing that. Hmm. It says, isn't it interesting, hey? Well, Hold all on. right, I'll go up to the top of the page, the very top, and where the orange tabs are, about yeah. the old... You see Stan's corner. You click on yeah. that. Yeah. It says Deo Enterprises. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Did so you I'm click sure on Stan's corner? Yeah, I've got it, and it shows all Stan's show images. Is that the one to go to, Stan's show images? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, USA and Hopi Messi. Okay, which one do I go to? You go to the one that says uh, key, key fault, fault line. Ah, uh, here we are. I got it. Key fault lines. That's good. Okay. Now look at the one on the right top. The one in the middle has got some kind of a... <clears throat> yeah, riffs problem. underneath the eastern U.S. The, the one riffs underneath the eastern U.S. Is that the one yes. you're referring to? Yeah. And also one right riffs... Uh, yeah. They, yep. they all say that, but go to the far <clears throat> right one. Yeah. Okay. Now then you see where it says Montana, Florida, Lineament? Yes. Okay. Wow. Okay. Now that... To look at the states that goes through, there's a... Are you there still? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to look at the states, you look at the the middle map there, the rifts under the eastern U.S. And unfortunately, the big picture doesn't come up at the moment. But you can see that it cuts the top right hand corner of Wyoming, the left lower corner of Montana, uh, Idaho, and then up into Washington. That's that's the kind of general uh, <coughs> direction of that of that lineament, right. which does go through the Yellowstone National Park area, which has a new you know, vent forming right along that line to the northwestern side of the Yellowstone Caldera. So right. any shake up there or elsewhere may cause that to leak or explode. Yeah, which is a super volcano. Yeah, that's not too good. <laughs> right. So in other words, we could have some very serious problems. The Appalachian Front, of course, it connects to the New Madrid fault system, right? Yeah, and uh, even though this map doesn't show the New Madrid uh, that I'm using, if you go back, you know, uh, to the the index there, you'll see that the um, I do have the New Madrid rifts and uh, uh, the normal uh, fault zones showing as large maps there, and you can see how the Appalachians have a lot of quakes and New Madrid does, <clears throat> and then you know, of course along this um, this uh, rift line. But um, it, yeah, that rift line looks like it runs pretty well between um, Little Rock. Past Memphis, right to Paducah, Kentucky. Yeah. In, are you talking about the turn. one that? Are you talking about the lineament? Or are you talking about the, the New Madrid fault line that you've shown yeah. in your map here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So basically, I think that there's a lot more fracture zones under the United States that could be affected by major crustal movement, or whatever cause, than people realize. And so uh, we're just now putting this map up to bring, bring attention to it because people that live along that line uh, probably should make, you know, preparations for a, a good shake. When we come back, we'll talk about where do you think this is going, what earth changes occurring not only to the planet in terms of earthquakes, but other things that you think should, we should discuss. Back in a moment with Stan Dale, the website... Standale.com. Very amazing uh, website. You got to you've got to visit uh, Standale's website. He has an amazing background. 
Uh, today in space weather, I noticed that there was a large explosion in Jupiter because of an asteroid strike. We know that um, you've done some re- remarkable uh, calculations that there is in the equations a uh, place for a 3,600-year period uh, returning large object coming to our solar system from a, around a 40 degree off the ecliptic. The uh, the uh, Astronomer, one of the head astronomers from Brazil came forward in the spring with a statement that he's imaged it. You can see it with the infrared satellites called IRAS, the stereoscopic satellites, Chandra, which is X-ray, and uh, radio satellites, uh, too, as well as the, the Arecibo one down in, uh, can actually pick it up by radio telescope. Uh, I have from multiple sources that this is coming in. I'm not setting dates, but I know there were a lot of people trying to see if they could set dates for it. We know that it, the evidence I have from my sources is, is probably a red dwarf star, which it also has a debris field of objects rotating around it because it's like a small sun, uh, and that, that debris field will contain asteroids and other objects <clears throat> that will come into our inner solar system, that, in fact, this object may be the reason why we have a giant debris field called the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, because that's its normal orbital range where it comes into the inner solar system. Uh, is there any evidence that some of these things I'm saying uh, I have some truth, and is there a timeline that you've got some information on, Stan? Well, first of all, yes. Uh, I do think that there, there is a stable orbit for some object, a uh, massive object, that's about, um, oh, let's see, 248, 238 times the distance of Earth from the Sun. That's its mean you know, circular orbit, but it's really an elliptical or egg-shaped orbit. Right. And as you said, tilted at about 40 degrees to the ecliptic. Now, that's coming in from the southern side of the ecliptic plane of our solar system, which means that people in the southern hemisphere are probably the most, you know, <laughs> the ones that we could see it with, uh, you know, imaging telescopes other than the uh, IRIS satellite you mentioned. Right. Now, because that's government controlled, you know. Right. Yeah, right. And, okay. And, so, and of course, right. yeah, the, the, new, the new infrared telescope that can be put on this, 747 that was in a joint American-German project uh, three years ago that's now up there. So they can go to 40,000 feet and image through that very, very accurately uh, infrared objects in our solar system. Well, we know that back in 1983 that there were images taken uh, at that time uh, of um, uh, massive heat signatures. They found 10 of them. One of them, they said, was the uh, a missing 10th planet. And NASA and everybody got all excited about it, and then all of a sudden they decided, oh, that was just an error. It, it wasn't really a planet, just a big, hot nebula that we thought was a planet. Uh, too far away, um, not it. But I think that was a cover-up. But um, uh, you, you mentioned about the could have uh, intersected the asteroid belt between uh, Mars and Jupiter. Yeah, it could have, because even Velikovsky's research of ancient documents in Egypt said that there was likelihood that Venus uh, had been parked in the asteroid orbit and was part of a system that was destroyed by something coming in and knocking Venus out of the asteroid orbit and down into its orbit where it is now, where it's the only planet that is slowly spinning backwards. Uh, yeah. And we think it will, it will normalize eventually, either flip upside down and spin the right way like the rest of the planets, or just stop and fought, fly apart before it can do that and then regather the pieces. Like yeah, the fact that it's spinning backwards means it was hit by an object that's just like a spinning top that started to spin it backwards, and probably that's part of the reason why it's now superheated, because it wouldn't have normal distribution of air and currents and so on, and that's probably why the, the, it's one of the factors why it's got global super warming. Yeah, and boy, there's a lot more on that. But um, You've got some other interesting theories, Stan, and I want to hear them because you were one of the first to talk about the idea of, quote, hollow planets, which isn't really totally hollow, but large structures change. Like, in other words, I remember the first time I saw this, I was in grade 8, and I told my geography teacher that, geez, South America sure looks like if you cut it out from the graph, from the, the globe, you could slide it over to Africa. And he said, yeah, isn't that interesting? But the thing is, in order for all these sections, like the ancient world, the Earth would have to be maybe 30, 40% smaller. So, That's right. uh, so let's talk about that because we're having sinkholes all over the planet. We're having geotectonic plates. We know that the oceans actually have a mesoceanic ridge that's 23,000 miles long where the, there literally is magma rising up and then spreading out and sliding underneath the, 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 uh, the plates of the continents. So we, in a sense, almost have like uh, uh, 
pineapple slices floating on a sea of jello. Uh, we, we call the magma the mantle. And the ocean floor is literally this fresh magma being boiled out and pushed out to the sides. We can see the zebra stripes, too, with the, from the Second World War of the changing magnetic field flux lines that shows that this pattern has been going on for millions of years, but that the Earth was a different size uh, and it was a different distribution of the continents in terms of even the equator. That uh, I think it was 8 million years ago, Alaska was on the equator. Well, um, we're, there are so many people <coughs> working on this now, then it's not funny, but um, believe it or not, Neil Adams, the cartoonist, the comic book, comic book cartoonist, has right. a website where he has actually taken the Earth and the continents and shrunk the Earth down by about a third and shows how all the pieces fit together to make a solid, you know, surface. Wow, exactly. Neil Adams, right? Yeah, if you go to that my website, to the, the show images place where I had you, and look at, you'll see a kind of a half, kind of a blue picture, uh, uh, like a ring, half of a ring, and then half of a planet. It's called Hollow Planet Stars and Galaxies. If you click on that yeah. and go down a, about three rows, you'll see where it says, See Neil Adams' Smaller Earth. See oh, yeah, yeah, I see that. Yeah, I, I, I've done that. Okay, and if you go over there, he's animated to show you not only Earth, but Mars, the moon, uh, <coughs> one of the, like, uh, Tethys, I think it is, a, another moon of one of the, the, the gas planets. All of them have, uh, exhibit shrinkage, or expand, sorry, expansion of their surfaces. Now, what he has not addressed here, but what, which does occur, is what we're seeing here on the Earth is irregular expansion. Like, it's not uniform you know, where the planet equally stretches as it expands. <coughs> right. Uh, if you take a soap bubble and look at it in the sunlight, when you just blow it, you know how the rainbow things appear on the surface of the soap bubble? Yeah. Okay. You'll also notice that the soap bubble is not perfectly mm -hmm. round. It kind of wobbles and it's kind of got bulges here and there, and the surface of that bubble stretch, you know, stretches irregularly, and you'll see that by watching the rainbow patterns that form on it. Right. Now, um, under the, the analysis of gravity that I've been doing here that you're seeing on this page, uh, there is a, a fine, very fine, like a billion times smaller molecules than, a, than an electron even, that is a sea of energy that uh, forms atoms, forms uh, stars, planets, etc. by spin. Right. You don't have gravity unless you have spin around an axis. Right. And under my theory, the or hypothesis at this point, if you wish, all planets, stars, moons, galaxies, everything, periodically open up holes at their north and south pole of their spin. Right. And these holes let heat out from the core of, say, like in the case of a galaxy, from the supermassive black hole. Right. And our, our supermassive black hole at the center of the Milky Way where we live is opening up now. It's going through an opening stage and it's shooting out tremendous high-frequency energy from both polar regions. Yeah, in other words, uh, what we may have is a circulatory system for the galaxy, uh, and that in a sense the black hole may be linked to white holes where energy and mass are transferred across the galactic uh, plane to the planets and stars. back and uh, yeah this gets into some very interesting things and of course uh, uh, we're both believers we know that there's intelligent creation the the, the galaxy itself is a is a is an, in a sense a living organism there's energy going into and stars descending into it but the supermassive black hole which is the center of every galaxy which is a primary structure of, of the the universe the energy reemerges as energy and matter through what I call the torsion field. You call it the containment field, where planets and stars actually, the white hole that energy and mass reemerges. And uh, so, in other words, there's a structure of of uh, time space wormholes throughout the galaxy. That ma energy and mass is jumping across time space from the supermassive black hole to our stars. Uh, across uh, it literally exceeds the speed of light. So most people don't realize that the actual structure of the galaxy is quite different than what people believe. It's actually, in a sense, a a contained uh, system with a, a a flow of energy and mass that has organized, energetic, and intelligent structure to it. Well, it's certainly uh, organized, um, and um, 
intelligently organized just by the virtue of the spin. Yeah. What I'm wondering at the moment, Bill, is, um, you know, we've heard uh, a lot of people in the New Age movement, whatever, and kind of the, the woo-woo section of science right. saying, we're, we're passing through the galactic equator of the Milky Way, and this is going to be 2012, the end of the Earth, and all that stuff. Yeah. What I, I've tried to keep an open mind about what might happen if when we do pass through the galactic plane, the ecliptic plane of the galaxy, if you wish. And that we're talking black holes in the center shooting energy out through the polar regions. What happens when it curls back into the equator? Do right. we run into a bit of stress there? I mean, the Earth. Well, what I, I dug up some literature on that and actually found out that they're, they're detecting what they call a bow shock wave of gamma rays and cosmic background radiation as we pass through the plane, which apparently happens every 62 million years. <clears throat> and um, so this event is combining with a bunch of other cycles that are 105,000, 11,500, 360 year uh, ice age cycles and cycles that are all tied to volcanism, and we're in a more energetic part of the galaxy, so something is going to happen. This is my theory. I wanted to run by you, is that the structure of time-space is actually different above and below the galactic plane, and that the change in the structure affects plasma activity in the stars and the planets, because everything in the universe is plasma. It's charged particles. Right. That, that changes the activity of the sun, so we're much more likely to have coronal mass ejections much more likely to have volcanism because it changes almost like changing gears <clears throat> on the uh, geodynamics of the earth creating uh, magma flows inside the earth like rivers of magma that literally create our, our magnetic flux field around the earth and so the reason why we're getting a lot of increased earthquakes is not primarily just gravitonic like this object is too far out to do that but energetic yep. because we're moving into a different uh, torsion field or different structure of time space it's actually it's actually physically different in terms of structure, and that will it's like changing gears so that you have massive increases in volcanism and star activity as you pass through the galactic plane. Well, there, I think that there are several uh, <clears throat> events that are, that are converging, as you said, several uh, cycles. One right. of them is, of course, the Earth's magnetic field is generated, as you said, by a, a moving plasma inside the, the planet, but periodically we know that that inverts and the north becomes the south pole and south becomes the north pole yeah that's already happening too with the south south pole anomaly which is getting closer and closer to the surface of the earth and it's already over three million square miles in the south atlantic that's pretty big yeah and but what people kind of don't uh, address a lot is that as we flip the poles during that flipping which doesn't happen in a second it takes you know days uh, and perhaps a couple weeks for it to complete and stabilize but when it goes to zero because it has to go to zero as it's inverting. When it goes to zero, we lose the ionosphere and the uh, um, Van Allen belts and all that kind of stuff that are shielding us from heavy-duty radiation and from ultraviolet. Right. So during that period of time, it will cook the planet's surface. Now, if the, if the transition doesn't take weeks and it does it within a couple of days, that's doable, but uh, it's still going to fry a lot of things on the planet and blind a lot of animals and people that, that are out there when the ultraviolet hits it, at that strength. Yeah. yeah, in fact, I, what I tell on the show is that one of the most accurate ways of measuring if our magnetosphere is starting to, to re decrease uh, is to have a UV detector, and we're not getting, we're only getting reports of A and B light. Most people don't realize that C and D ultraviolet light will penetrate through buildings even. Uh, C we call cancer, D cause death, I call it the death ray. Uh, mm -hmm. And these uh, background cosmic radiation, zeta particles, <clears throat> and uh, X-rays from space are very penetrating, very dangerous, and uh, it's almost like you have to have a fallout shelter for it. And uh, it could be well what we're talking about in the Bible, where they say there's five months where the sting of death will uh, will be there. In other words, where there may be a period of, and it may not go to zero. Some of the reports I have suggest that the, that the magnetic field may drop to 15 percent and then flip. And during that yeah. time, though, you're going to get massive amounts of radiation. I talked to botanists as long as 30-some years ago, because I did research in oceanography, <clears throat> that a, a drop of 75% in the ozone layer for 45 minutes over any area of crops would kill one-third of the trees and all of the grassy plants, which is exactly what the Bible says. So my guess is we're looking at some point of some convergence of elements that will cause a massive flip of the magnetic field it will also be exposed to increased dangers from coronal mass ejections even small ones where there's no uh, protection from the solar wind or uh, the sun's radiation which is pretty nasty 
people don't realize our magnetosphere is protecting us all the time from death rays from the sun. Instead of being our, you know, as the ancient Roman, as the ancient Egyptians had, it, it, it kind of is their god, you know, Ra, that it would actually be frying the earth with radiation. So in other words, you couldn't even go during the day. You'd go blind, get third-degree burns, and none of the crops, unless they're covered, would be fried. Yep, and the the fish in the ocean up toward the uh, shallow uh, depths of it, some surface down a few meters, would also boil. Yeah, um, any 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 fish within about probably six meters, which is around twenty feet, uh, anything below that might survive. So the larger fish like tuna and other fish might survive, but uh, the surface ocean phytoplankton would have a massive die-off. And the result would be, by the way, the oceans would turn red because you get a, a bloom of dinoflagellates that would pick up the uh, dead phytoplankton and the oceans would literally physically turn red. Well, you know, they found uh, here recently, oh, back in 92, that we were getting two new spectral frequencies in the UV range out of the sun. Right. And that they were being absorbed by phytoplankton and archaeobacterium that were uh, coming out of the ice at the South Pole. Oh, and wow. because they were, they were absorbing that ultraviolet, it was heating up the ocean just by the fact that they were living. You know, uh, and absorbing that that light, so letting it reflect back out. So uh, that's a subtle. That can explain what's going on with Greenland because they're saying that yeah. they've been strobing on July twelfth, and there was one incident after that with uh, CME. The uh, the government of NASA also did an experiment with high particle uh, nanoparticle aluminum, which dissolved and disappeared the uh, oxygen level of the upper atmosphere, and they were trying to experiment to see what it would do. And of course, the magnetosphere requires uh, the ozone layer requires three things: a magnetic field, oxygen and ultraviolet light. And if you decrease the oxygen because you absorb it with nanoparticles of aluminum and destroy it, all of a sudden you're going to get a lot of high-energy light. So the, there's a giant lake developing over Greenland now caused by their experiment that uh, is high-energy ultraviolet light striking the surface. And, of course, there's obviously bubbles and organisms in the ice or in the, in the, uh, the uh, ice shelf there. <clears throat> in the giant, and there's one-twelfth of the, water, the fresh water on Earth is in Greenland. So that means that something is allowing that energy to be converted to heat to actually start melting and creating a giant lake on the top of the Iceland glacier. Well, I think that in addition to that, the heat source might be also that the polar holes, uh, north and south, both are starting to thin or about to open up, and they're letting a lot more of the, of the heat energy from our core escape into the ah, surface. Yeah, that I mean, would make down sense. At Bos- down at yeah. Vostok, the, the, the Russians looked at the lake, what was it, several miles down, that's right at freezing, at 32 degrees, and uh, it, it's a lake uh, underneath the ice pack at, at uh, Antarctica. Now, why are both poles doing that? Is it uh, because the, the UV will hit at a certain angle uh, during one season and an, an angle different to that the next season? So those things all, I think, add together what you're saying and are causing the melt. Yeah, so something really big is happening. The planet is going through major convulsions, and we're just seeing the start of these... Uh, Major changes. We'll come back more with amazing Stan Dale, the website standale.com. Back in a moment. These are important updates. Welcome back, and we have Stan Dale. Uh, if you're out there and you want to have Stan back, do contact us, because I believe Stan is one of the most important people in terms of understanding the science. And he doesn't just uh, make you know light statements. He's done a lot of research in this area, a lot of it fairly classified. And he's done some remarkable work in terms of theoretical uh, de- development and hypoth- hypothetical research that explains the structure of our planets. Uh, you showed some pictures here <clears throat> before the break about Mars, about the North Pole, about the polar ice pack in the North Pole of Mars, uh, the Earth changes, uh, I think, are going to trump the globalist plans. And part of the reason why I think they're in such a rage to get control of the planet <clears throat> is they know that things like CME and Earth changes and so on are going to break up their plans for a globalist control. Um, Obama's second term, if he gets one, will resemble the first term of Vladimir Lenin. Uh, we have coming up tomorrow Dr. Bob Thiel in the third hour. I consider... Every, all the experts consider Obama probably the potentially most evil man that has ever lived in history. And uh, his ability to have his entire record scrubbed and everything. And then, again, the government's just withdrawn more and more, even during this Obama term, information so that you could predict earthquakes, uh, the real uh, danger of incoming big rocks in space, 
We talked about yep. this with Lyndon LaRouche. Uh, the solar and galactic changes, they're, they're not telling people about the fact that there's a lot more ultraviolet light out there that's more dangerous. We can go out and get records now of 11, 12, and 13, uh, when 10 was the highest level before on the UV scale. <clears throat> And people can see it. If certain days you go out there, even on a cloudy day, you say, this doesn't feel normal. Your skin is stinging. So yeah. it's putting the crops under stress. It's putting the biosphere under stress. And there's no action on things like Fukushima. I just talked to Dr. William Ray, the direct, one of the founders of the American Academy of Environmental Medicine. They want me to speak in October in St. Petersburg, Florida, to the academy. I wrote a paper and presented it to them, so they're going to publish it in their journal. Um, nothing's being done. And all these signs tell people. So when I hear people that they support Obama, they're crazy. He's a Sunni Muslim Satanist and probably the most evil man in history. Yes, I think the campaign is being screwed up by Romney, and I don't believe he's by any means perfect. I think that there's lots of deficiencies there, but he's steerable, uh, especially with people like Ryan and the conservative elements within the Republican Party, even though they've been treated with disrespect. Uh, we don't really have an alternative right now. And... Uh, uh, people need to personally start getting control. They need to start, uh, you know, voting for congressmen, senators, and city councilors that actually know what's going to happen to the planet. And they need to personally start preparing themselves. I think your wife's book, Holly's book, which is in the fourth edition, <clears throat> Dare to Prepare, is essential reading. Everybody has to have this book and has to start taking steps. If they're not prepared personally, as it says in the Bible, you're worse than an infidel. You're not prepared for the earth changes, for the fact you may have a neighbor that's starving. You're not ready for simple medical treatment of a broken bone or fracture or laceration. You're not ready for a system that literally crashes and burns. And it could happen as simple as a CME, an asteroid strike, a collapse in the ozone layer, for as little as a couple of days, and all of a sudden the crops fail. And I believe that's already happening. I think one of the things that's hiding is this spring we've had UV strobing, that may not just be the drought causing our crops to fail in different parts of the world, but we're having changes in the atmosphere, energetics of the sun, and our protection that's killing crops. You know, uh, a lot of people around here, and even those that we've uh, had visiting our website and emailing us, have had trouble with their crops. And our, like our tomatoes, that should be like two and a half inches to three inches in diameter, were something like an inch. You know, beefsteaks came out like cherry tomatoes, and uh, the, the the watermelons didn't completely grow to full size, and uh, the uh, there's, you know, uh, stunted growth in a lot of the veg vegetables and like squash and uh, uh, zucchini. We had these stupid bugs, the, these uh, beetles that just swarm these things and just consume them. Um, so, you know, it, there's something wrong and it's not just drought. I mean, we watered our plants and we shaded them. We did everything right like we normally do, but they just were stunted. So I, I think it's it's a different kind of radiation hitting or not getting here that, that we normally we get from the sun in certain bandwidths. Something is telling a lot of the living things, uh, you know, don't don't grow big right now for some reason. I think also what we're seeing is we're going to see cancer rates go through the ceiling, cancer yep. of the skin, uh, pterygian, which is an eye condition where the outside of the of the eye, the the white portion grows across with blood vessels, new blood vessels called neovascularization, cataracts. Um, suppression of the immune lymphocytes caused by ultraviolet light because what happens is it's very similar to radiation exposure. If you get a blast of x-rays, your lymphocytes stop working and you can get infections. Yep. They can be remote, like sinus or lung. Um, the, the, you know, I really think people should take understand that what was written in the Bible is actually true, but it has to be viewed through the eyes of someone with a scientific background to understand and interpret it. So I see yep. the five months of, of uh, you know, of the the sting of death fleeing from them means that it's going to be a toxic world. You're going to see people literally cocooned inside their homes for a period of weeks or whatever, uh, or months, like up to five months, and then they are afraid to go outside until the full passage and the magnetic field restores to the point where it can actually be safe to be outside during the day. Uh, that does not surprise me that that could come. And people don't have food stores. We don't have a national food store. We're not prepared to help other nations, and oh, we need Bill, to do that now. Wait a minute. No, we do have a national food storage. The government yeah. says, if you've got it, it's ours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, that, Isn't that's that an amazing? Executive order. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the executive order. And, of course, the National Defense Authorization Act, the Appropriations Act that Obama passed. He really is a dictator. And the amazing thing is that uh, he's now come and openly supported uh, the Syrian rebels, which are going to make the situation even more dangerous to attack Israel. Now, 
I know there are some uh, Sabbatean Jews that are plainly Satanists, but the nation of Israel is ordained by God. And I, when I went out, on, and I tell people I'm a Christian Zionist, and the right. ultimate, uh, the ultimate Aliyah is for Christians, which are the house of Ephraim, to return to the land of Israel. And it'll be a very big land. It won't be a little nation like Israel. It'll go from the northern Lebanon all to the way to the Euphrates, all the way to the uh, Nile River, and all the way down to uh, through the Sinai. You're That's talking the about the Abrahamic covenant, aren't you? Right, and that that covenant hasn't been finally, hasn't been nullified, but right. it, and it hasn't been fulfilled. The problem is the rest of the world is going to be in such a state that there will have to be an aliyah. I mean, just look at the changes that could well happen to America. We could have the super volcano go off. We have major earthquakes. We could have, uh, and and of course the Christians, if anyone should know that if, that the earth changes may be so violent that they may have to move there. They may not have any choice. If they want to have a nation that's safe from a very violent and post-apocalyptic world where, uh, you know, and the globalists aren't helping anyway. I mean, they're not preparing to harden the, uh, the power grid networks. They're not prepared. They want to have a virtual money system based on electronics when we know the satellites could easily fail. Uh, so none of these systems are designed to actually withstand the earth changes that are coming, are they? Well, not for the public, no. But I think that, that like... Um John Galt and Atlas Shrugged that uh, they're taking care of themselves and they've secreted away advanced technologies underground and supplies and stuff and they they intend to come out after it's all over, over in the post-apocalyptic period and survive and they find any of us alive on the surface then we can become their serfs in the <laughs> Yeah. Few, well, I, I think they made a few miscalculations as the Bible says they shall hide themselves in the rocks and deep places of the earth they have to have air intake vents number one they, a lot of them do have nuclear reactors like the city that's uh, up near the I-70 in Denver that can and I know this from my high level clearance 16,800 people can be housed there for a uh, minimum of seven years but they literally could be down there for a century they're everything from hospitals to shopping malls to everything to up in yeah, the, underground lake and everything yeah, they get everything. It's uh, trees and parks and everything under there. People say, oh, no, that's not possible. I said, well, I'm sorry. They have a printing machine called the Fed Reserve and printing press, and they spent hundreds of trillions of dollars on these facilities all over the world. There's over 4,000 facilities in, in pretty well every country on the planet. Uh, some of the largest ones are actually up in uh, Norway and in China, <clears throat> and uh, they build giant facilities there. A lot of them are in dormant magma domes that where the lithosphere of the Earth has moved over the mantle. Uh, a lot of them are these uh, what we call matrix ones where they, they tunnel with these large tunneling, tunnel boring devices that are much more advanced than the one they use to make the tunnel. They use uh, sodium-cooled nuclear reactors and impact lasers to create a, a microparticle dust. They f burn it against the side and create an obsidian core and then lay a tri-radiate unidirectional maglev track. And, of course, maglev trains uh, technology has been around for many decades. You're an expert on that as well. Yep. So... There's a lot of things that people think are just sci-fi and they're real. I know. Uh, and the science you show on your site is probably the most advanced in imaging and information on Earth changes available anywhere. And you have theories and hypotheses that explain it in scientific testing, like the twisting wire setup test. Yes. Amazing. We well, need to get you back on soon. Your website, standeo.com. Check it out. If there's materials there, the information you can purchase, like Holly Dale's book, get it. You need to be aware. You need to prepare. The globalists are preparing. If you're not prepared, you'll be in a state of shock when all these things start to happen. Thank you, Stan. Amazing show. Thank you. Bye-bye. Back bye. with Hour 2 coming up. And uh, Dr. Mike Kaufman, our expert Ph.D. in environmentalism. And the uh, green agenda of a second term of Obama will be very, very evil indeed.